Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis, the channel where we look at complex organic chemistry and explain how it works. This week, we are going to look at the total synthesis of deoxoapidine. The work that we will look at in this video was published by the Tokuyama Group in Angavante Chemie in a paper entitled A Concise Enantioselective Total Synthesis of Deoxoapidine. This compound was first isolated by Inglesius and Diata from the Tabernay Armeniaca plant in 1975. It is part of the Espidosperma family of alkaloids, which feature a distinctive pentacyclic system at the core of the molecule. We've seen these molecules before, in the synthesis of minovincine and espidofractinine. This molecule is also present in aposynatia alkaloids vobtusine and voacandamine A, which are formed by the dimerization of this molecule in two different ways. So let's start with the retrosynthesis. The first disconnection removes the ester group, which corresponds to a methoxycarbonylation reaction, leading back to a hexacyclic fragment. This could be formed using a transannular oxidative manic reaction which would form a carbon-carbon bond across the span of a nine-membered macrocycle. This macrocycle could be formed using a palladium-promoted cyclization cascade of the indole moiety with an alkyl halide. The indole fragment could be attached using an amide coupling, and the allyl group necessary to form the halide could be installed using a Keck radical allylation of a brominated bicyclic compound. Both the bromide and the five-membered ring could be installed in one step using a bromocyclization from the piperidine precursor, which is the starting material for the entire synthesis. So let's start with this cyclization. This reaction is a five-endocyclization, which is favoured according to Baldwin's rules, which we saw in the video, Rules for Ring Closure. To carry out this reaction, they needed a source of bromonium ions, a chiral catalyst to ensure enantioselectivity and also sodium carbonate, which acts as a base. This enantioselective bromocyclization was based on Tost's work on chiral anions in phase transfer catalytic reactions. While this reaction was not carried out using phase transfer conditions, the bromonium source used contains the features of a molecule which would be used under such conditions. Thus, it has a hydrophilic quaternary ammonium salt fragment, which is coordinated to dibromine, and a hydrophobic aromatic fragment. The catalyst they used to control the enantioselectivity was a binaphthal phosphoric acid, which contains bulky aromatic rings with cyclohexyl substituents, which creates a sterically hindered chiral environment in which the reaction occurs. Reaction of this catalyst with the bromonium source creates the active brominating complex, which reacts with the double bond of the substrate to first form a bromonium intermediate which then undergoes an intramolecular reaction where the alcohol acts as a nucleophile to attack this three-membered ring and form the target compound in a 76% yield with an 84% enantiomeric excess. Taking this bromide forward, they then performed a Keck allylation. This reaction used AIBN as a radical initiator, which abstracts a bromine radical and leaves a radical on the tertiary carbon centre, which then attacks allyl tributyl stannate. This causes the expulsion of the tributyl tin radical and produce the desired allyl compound in a 92% yield with a complete retention of stereochemistry. This allyl group was then reacted with ozone to carry out an ozonolysis reaction. A 3 plus 2 cycloaddition of ozone with the double bond produces a malozonide intermediate. This ozonide undergoes a cycloreversion to produce formaldehyde and a carbonyl O oxide. This is attacked by methanol, which was used as a solvent in the reaction, and forms a hydroperoxy acetal. This was reduced in situ with sodium borohydride to produce the target primary alcohol at an 84% yield. The next step of the synthesis was a deprotection of the CBZ group with palladium hydroxide on carbon and hydrogen gas which produced the free amine in a quantitative yield. The indole carboxylic acid 
was added directly to this reaction mixture, along with DMT-MM, which served as a coupling reagent. This activates the carboxylic acid by acting as an electrophile, which forms an active ester upon the expulsion of the N-methyl morpholine group. This activation makes the carboxylic acid more electrophilic and allows it to react with the deprotected amine group to form the target amide in a 99% yield. With these two halves of the target molecule now coupled together on one side, the authors needed to couple the other side together to form the macrocycle in preparation for the transannular reaction. Before this could be carried out, they first had to convert the hydroxyl group into a halide, in this case an iodide which they found was more reactive in the palladium promoted coupling. They utilised an Appel reaction to carry out this transformation. Triphenylphosphine was reacted with iodine to form an electrophilic phosphonium intermediate. This was attacked by the nucleophilic hydroxyl group. This forms an electrophilic phosphonium ether, which is attacked by the iodide, which displaces triphenylphosphine oxide in an SN2 fashion to produce the target iodide in a 90% yield. This reaction also included imidazole, which can act as a base to scavenge the protons liberated by the reaction. This reaction was quite high yielding, as they report a 90% yield after purification four times with column chromatography. With the indole and the iodide now in place, the authors carried out a very interesting CH activation intramolecular alkylation cascade, which was promoted by palladium. This reaction is thought to begin with an NH activation process, which leaves the indole group coordinated to the palladium, which then undergoes an amino palladation reaction with norbornene. This places the palladium in close proximity to the two position of the indole group, where it then undergoes an ortho CH activation, promoted by potassium phosphate and potassium bis trifluoromethansulfonyl amide, which is proposed to increase the reactivity by acting as a halide scavenger. This then undergoes an oxidative insertion with the primary alkyl halide to form a palladium 4 intermediate, which rapidly undergoes reductive elimination to form the new carbon carbon bond and complete the nine membered lactam ring. Following the expulsion of norbornene and hydrolysis of the indole palladium complex, the authors obtained the target lactam in a 67% yield. Taking this macrocycle forward, they then reduced the amide using lithium aluminium hydride. Addition of one hydride to the amide group produces an aluminium coordinated hemiaminal intermediate. Expulsion of the oxygen produces an aluminium ion, which is then reduced by another equivalent of aluminium hydride to produce the target amine in a 99% yield. With this in hand, they then proceeded to the final major obstacle of the synthesis which was the transannular oxidative manic reaction. To carry out this reaction, the researchers used the white Chen catalyst. This is an iron-based catalyst, which has a rigid and sterically hindered bis pyridyl methyl pyrrolidine type ligand, which occupies four of the six available coordination sites, with acetonitrile occupying the other two. These acetonitrile ligands are quite labile and allows for reactivity, while the larger PDP ligand provides stability to the complex, which allows it to occupy high oxidation states, such as iron 5, which are not commonly seen in non-heme iron complexes. This chemistry allows it to take part in reactions, such as this CH activation process. The catalyst is first oxidized with hydrogen peroxide and acetic acid, and is proposed to form an iron 5 oxide complex which features a monodentate acetate ligand. This high oxidation state is unstable and rapidly reacts with the substrate to abstract a hydrogen radical and is reduced to the more stable iron 4 hydroxo complex. Another hydrogen radical is abstracted to form an electrophilic aminium ion. The indole group then reacts in an enamine type fashion and attacks this aminium electrophile forming a new carbon-carbon bond, which links the two sides of the nine-membered macrocycle, forming two new rings in the process. The five- and six-membered ring, which completes the distinctive aspidosperma framework. 
As the PDP ligand is chiral, this produced only one enantiomer, in a 35% yield. With this key reaction complete, it was a trivial matter to install the methoxy carbonyl group. This was completed using Manders reagent. This reagent is very selective for C alkylation, which is why it is often used in place of the more common methyl chloroformate. Deprotonation of the compound with sec butyl lithium produces an enamide which acts as a nucleophile towards the carbonyl group and forms the target methyl ester in an 86% yield along with the expulsion of lithium cyanide. This reaction completed the synthesis of deoxoapidine. Overall, the molecule was synthesized in a total yield of 286 mg in only 10 steps with an 8.6 overall yield. Highlights of this synthesis are the highly selective bromocyclization, the palladium promoted CH activation C alkylation cascade, and the transannular oxidative manic reaction, which offers an interesting approach to synthesizing these complex polycyclic structures. That's everything from this week's Simplifying Synthesis. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you have anything you'd like to see, let me know in the comments down below. I'll be back next week where I look at the total synthesis of batrytotoxin in A.